From New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Today, Nicole Wallace is here talking her new job, new co-hosts, and new season of The View. And find out this year's hottest Halloween costumes. Plus, Mariah and Nick's feud. You won't believe what they're fighting over now. Now, here's Wendy. studio full of kids upstairs. We are about to present those Halloween costumes. I can't wait. So how am I doing? I'm doing great. Let's get started. It's time for Hot Topics. time of the year that I ever feel right in black and orange is Halloween. Otherwise, I hate it. And in Europe, they love it. I think it's in France that like that's a, a big deal to wear, you know, black and orange together. Also at Christmas time, like you ever catch yourself in green and red in the middle of July and realize, wait a minute, it is not Christmas. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching today. So Nick Cannon and Mariah Carey are locked in a heated custody battle. It's not over them babies. It's over them dogs. <laughs> well, here's the thing. And, you know, I'm not a pet owner. I was raised with pets. I was raised with um, ha Hammy and Henrietta, my hamsters. I had Chauncey. <laughs> Chauncey and Barney were my rabbits. We had Hans, Fritz, and Hans, too, as dogs. Not all at one time, but, you know, when one would pass along. Like, we always had, you know, animals. But we, you know, my family now that I've created, we don't have pets. So I don't get the whole custody of animals thing. It's, it's hard to wrap my head around. But Mariah reportedly wants custody of all eight of their dogs. <laughs> and, and, well, you're laughing, but, you know, there are a lot of people, you know, do, the animals are as important as the kids. And I get it. I mean, I don't get it, but I get it. Respectfully. Um, Nick wants to keep two of the dogs that he's developed a special bond with. <laughs> now, what you need to understand is that the two dogs that he's talking about are dogs that Mariah already owned before she met Nick. Oh. But Nick became, you know, part of the household, and Nick has grown very, very close to the dogs. Now, here's what I think. <laughs> I think that Nick is trying to torture a woman who is not necessarily mentally as stable as we would like her to be. And I feel like, um, you know, they have no problem with 50-50 custody. I, I also don't feel in my heart that Nick is the kind of man that would take a woman's money, because he has his own. I mean, even before he got with Mariah, remember, he was doing that show Wilding Out, which was a nice career for him. You know, he, uh, you know, had a nice life. And then he got with Mariah, and everything's just exploded. You know, he's got America's Got Talent, and he's the DJ, and he's... He's raking up now. So he's not the kind of guy who's going after the money. He's not going to go after dem babies. But I think that this dog thing, my take is that he's mentally trying to torture her and realizes that it's real easy. <laughs> she, like, she, love, she loves the dogs. Remember, I was telling you that, the, you know, some of the dogs, they aren't trained so well. So, you know, they're constantly nipping at her, which is why, yeah. They, she brings them out, but what happens, uh, allegedly, is that the dogs nip at her. So um, she makes sure that she always has Hello Kitty Band-Aids around, <laughs> you know, to put, well, th right there. Yep. <laughs> exhibit, exhibit A. Um, Nick, this is so mean, and the karma's gonna come around to get you. You know it's easy to push Mariah off the, the cliff. And, um, and trying to keep the dogs will do that. I feel as though you should let her keep all eight dogs, and you go out and you buy yourself some new dogs. <laughs> Besides, you can see the dogs when you come, come over to see the kids, and vice versa, you know? 
Well, let's talk about Bruce Jenner and, um, <laughs> and well, it's not exactly about Bruce, it's more about Chris. <laughs> Chris was spotted on a date with a mystery man. Well, I think that this is terrific. RadarOnline.com has the pictures to prove it. And, and as you can see, he's young, black, and attractive. And as you can see, this is a woman almost 60 years old. See, this is how you put it on a man. You, you know what I'm saying? I mean, the, the, the dance that you do before you actually do the dance. And the dance is called flirting, flirting. I mean, they were, first of all, they're in this place um, called Casa Vega. It's this Mexican restaurant out in California. I've been there one time before, the food is really good, but the carpet needed vacuuming. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, but the food was delish. Apparently, it's, it was this place that, you know, years and years ago, it's been around for a long time, and years and years ago, it was like a family-style place. And then all of a sudden, it became a place where a lot of celebrities go, like, um, you know, back in the day, like, Guns N' Roses would go there. And, and then the hours became later and later. And then it became, you know, the food was still great, but it became just a little bit more rock and roll and less family. Anyway, so here's Chris. And what is she doing? She's doing exactly what a girl should do to flirt. You lean in, you touch your hair. You can, you can see by his body language, he's leaned forward, he's engaged in her conversation. She's flirting like she's 18, and I mean that in the best way. Never forget the art of flirting, ladies, no matter how old you get. Yeah. And there were people in the restaurant and people were saying that there was a lot of forearm grazing and a lot of giggling at, at all his jokes and a lot of hair touching. And you see her leaned over like this. And when they were finished with their meal, he escorted her out the door by the small of her back. Oh. I venture to say she probably got her some. <laughs> but you know, here's the thing. And I've said this before. This is a very, very sexy, attractive woman. Why should she lay around and waste, you know, the rest of her life pining after Bruce since that relationship is now over? And when is too soon to move on? Particularly, when is it too soon to move on when your kids are old enough to understand? You know, it might be too soon to move on when your kids are 5 and 10 and 13 and whatnot, but her youngest is 17 and over in Europe with a 24-year-old man. <laughs> where the age of consent is 15. Oh. So why should Chris just lay around with an empty nest, you know? It, by the way, who is this man? At first, I thought it was Kadeem Hardison. <laughs> Does it a little bit, doesn't it look a little bit like the, the actor Kadeem Hardison? But it's not him. I don't know who this is. Now, the Wendy audience is vast. Hello? <laughs> Can you help me? Find out this man, what he does for a living, what his name is, whether he and Chris are dating regularly or whether this was at like a hit it or quit it, or was this a paparazzi setup? Do you see what I'm saying? Because I can tell you, Radar Online allegedly had this picture for a moment, and they just published it in the last like 24 hours. In the last 24 hours is when we put that picture out. Remember, if you watched the show the other day of um, um, Bruce at the Elton John concert with, with um, Chris's best friend, ex-assistant. Uh-huh. It's a mess in Hollywood. But anyway, so I, I venture to say that Chris had this picture and she set up all that arm grazing. You know, she knew she was being photographed in the restaurant and just waited to put it out there, you know. I'm sure she has connections with all of the magazines and all of the, the gossip websites and she cooperates with them and they cooperate with her. So, something smells fishy. <laughs> Let's find out who that man is. So... Um, and another thing about Chris, and I love that she's showing us this, she showed us the power of photoshopping. So she took a picture with one of my faves, Gordon Ramsay, and she posted the picture on Instagram. Chris posted a picture that looked, well, she, he posted the picture on his Instagram, and then she posted it on hers. Here is the original picture that Gordon posted. Now, here's the picture after Chris photoshopped it. Now, 
The kids here on staff tell me that uh, you need a special app to put on your phone. Uh, do you know I have no apps? I don't have, no, I don't have one app on my phone. As soon as they told me that you need an app, I was like, oh, forget it. <laughs> I, I just show the regular picture. But isn't it, who, who photoshops? Don't lie, clap if you photoshop. <laughs> yeah. There are a few people here that work at Wendy who said they never send not one picture until it's photoshopped to death. And if it's, and if it's not good, then they delete it oh, no. until it's photoshopped properly. Oh. Some people are so vain. Thank you, though, for that lesson, Chris. Let's move on. So, well, did you see the premiere of Tori and Dean's reality show the other day? No. All right, well, you missed episode one, but episode two is coming up next week. And it's hard to believe that Tori and Dean are living paycheck to paycheck. But that's what Tori says. She claims that they live paycheck to paycheck and they're paying for private school and all these other things. In the meantime, as you watch this clip... Notice the lovely chairs in the kitchen <laughs> that they could probably sell and get folding chairs, you know, just for a few extra bucks. And don't be distracted by the lizard on Dean's shoulder. Roll it. Paycheck to paycheck. After this, I have no idea if work's gonna come in. Like, oh, I'm gonna support my family in six months. And yet, look at the life we're leading. Like, it's... Why can't we? Paying for five private schools. <laughs> Baby, we can change our lifestyle. We can. We can get rid of all that stuff that... But why that's... should we have to? My dad wouldn't have wanted this. It would seem to me that, Do that Tori is the cause of all of her problems, you know? You wouldn't have to live paycheck to paycheck if you would just make up with your mother. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Spelling is worth $600 million. She only has one daughter, and that's Tori. One son, Randy, who lives up in, like, Seattle or something. He's married, he's got children, he's a very normal life. Um, if she just went to her mom's house on a rainy night... The thunder's clapping, her hair's all wet. <laughs> Make the tears, knock at the door. What mother is not gonna envelope you with a hug and say, come on in, baby. Aww. Let's start to mend things, you know? Yeah. I... <laughs> and I know that she said they're paying for five kids in private school and you're familiar with that they have four kids all seven years old and under. The fifth one is Dean's child from a previous marriage. Um, but why are they paying for private school? At least if Mrs. Spelling did want to help out, but, you know, it's been said that Tori's very irresponsible with money. You know, the way she grew up, very, very wealthy. You know, she goes out to get a handbag. Her idea of getting, I guess, a deal is $1,500 on a handbag versus, versus $6,000. In the meantime, she could go to Annie Says and get a durable handbag for, you know, $25. I, I don't really understand... But, Mrs. Spelling, if you at least wanted to relieve a little bit of pressure on your daughter, why wouldn't you just send a check to the private school for tuition? You don't have to give uh, fiscally irresponsible, allegedly Tory, money, but you can, like, make the car payments. Does that, does that make sense? Like, and you don't have to pay for Dean's car. If you have a problem with your son-in-law, you don't, don't pay for Dean. <laughs> but you can pay for Tory's car payments and, and send the kids to school. It's just, this show is so sad. I didn't watch either. You, you tell me how it all works out. <laughs> True Tory airs Tuesday nights at 9 o'clock on Lifetime, if you care to watch. So yesterday, I was telling you that Teresa over in the Jersey Housewives wrote a letter to the judge requesting what prison she wanted to go to. <laughs> and I told you, it's the prison up in, um, well, we did some digging. First of all, you know, it's the prison uh, based on Orange is the New Black. It's in Danbury, Connecticut. And Lauren Hill stayed there when she was locked up. Oh. Well, this is how Teresa's life... Will, well, she, Teresa's not going to go there because now that she made the request, you know, what I was saying to you, if I was the judge, I would send her the furthest place from a smoothed-out prison like that. You know, I'd send her to the rough spot. <laughs> anyway, but at that prison up in Danbury, um, wake-up call is 6 a.m., which is more sleep than many of us get. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> what time is your wake up call? 5.15, Suzanne? 5.15. Mine is 5.45, and I, and I keep hitting the alarm until 6. I think I might want to head to prison, though, if I can sleep till 6. Yes! <laughs> 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 and you only wear pastel green, which is like, um, you know, that color of doctor scrubs. Pastel green, gray, or white. Well, nothing wrong with that. Who needs all these choices in wardrobe? <laughs> when you wake up in the morning, doesn't half your morning get spent with, what am I gonna wear today? <laughs> what am I gonna wear today? <laughs> oh, you must make your bed. Well, who leaves the house with their bed unmade? I can't stand that. Like, like when you come home after a hard day at work and your bedroom is a mess? No bueno. <laughs> a including put, putting the, um, what do you call those pillows that you don't sleep on, the decorative pillows? I even put, put them back on the bed. Like, when I walk in, I want it to be like a hotel. I don't want it to be like the zoo. <laughs> and after they make the bed, they have to sweep their cell and mop the floor. Well, good. That's what the rest of us do, don't we? Yeah. Right. And after, um, and you can't watch TV until after you do your work. So if they wake up at 6, then they're probably free by 10, 10 a.m. Eastern time <laughs> to watch our show. <laughs> and we had a whole list of stuff that's in the commissary. The commissary sells top name stuff like Pantene shampoo and like, you know, not, not store brand and canned sardines. Oh, you don't like a sardine? Mmm. <laughs> Do you like yours with the olive oil or tomato sauce? Olive oil. I like them both ways. <laughs> and they sell Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> and they sell headphones and MP3 players, gold coral lip gloss, <laughs> and hair gel and everything. So, Suzanne, you're right. Might not be such a bad place. <laughs> but I must say, as prison goes, it's not the place for all of us because they make you remove your hair. Oh, no. <laughs> well, you, now you know you can't have a wig on in prison and clippings and stuff. But as far as prison goes, Teresa has the best hair for prison because all that hers, all of this is hers. Cute ponytail, the girls are gonna love her. <laughs> Sophia Varga um, can't seem to keep her ex, sorry, my leg is going to sleep. Uh, can't seem to keep her ex, Nick Loeb, the onion crunch king, out of her life. Even though she's still dating that hot Joe Manganiello. Well, Nick was spotted sneaking up on Sophia on the red carpet and me yes, yes. In the meantime, when she notices it, she doesn't even give him the grimace or a hard elbow, like, leave me alone. And Nick is with a date. Oh. Yeah. And, yeah, there's the date. So she's cute, but Sophia's cuter. <laughs> but anyway, um, Sophia was with a date to her son, Manolo, who, you know, is like 21 or something like that. The reason that Joe wasn't there is because there's Manolo is that Joe is off filming Mag Magic Mike. Even more the reason that you don't want to be around your ex-fiance. <sighs> Nick knows what he's doing. I think it's one of those, if I can't have her, then Joe can't either, you know? My thought, though, on women, you know, um, putting the kibosh on ex's poor behavior is that if you said it, leading with a pinky and a screw face, not a smile, men aren't stupid most of the time. They understand that. Like, get the hell away from me. We are over, you know? And make sure that the paparazzi catches that picture, you know? Anyway, um, let's talk about Paris Hilton. Well... Either she's wearing a hat and a wig, or she really did dye her blonde hair a different color. It's our hot shot of the day. Hit it. You know what? She's in Times Square, 
at Dave and Buster's, about to play some skee ball. And I think she looks terrific. Yeah. You know? Many of us can't, you know, fluctuate so severely our hair color and still look wonderful. I think she looks great there. Now let's show her with the blonde hair. I think she looks great there. Can we back up and show her a whole outfit? Moschino, the designer, they have, no, not that one. Uh-huh. Look, it's the Moschino Barbie outfit. <laughs> and if you'll squint and observe, she's wearing um, a, a purse that's a pink motorcycle jacket. And look, her iPhone cover is a Barbie mirror. Like, it's got to be great to be this girl. She just walks around doing stuff, driving her pink cars, collecting money. <laughs> Hi, Paris. Yeah. All right, everybody, clap it up. Yeah. Louder! We've got more great show for you. We're going to show you this year's hottest Halloween costumes. But up next, from The View, the new co-host, Nicole Wallace, is here. So don't miss it. Thank you. On an all-new Wendy, we're bringing the drama with over-the-top hot topics. Are you serious? And she's the ultimate drama queen. Susan Lucci shares dessert fit for a diva. So give me seconds. Tomorrow on an all-new Wendy. from being behind the scenes at the White House to front and center as a new co-host on The View. Now, recently, I was on the show, and we discussed Kim and Kanye. And Well, take a look. <laughs> we I didn't even know they were married before until I saw you eat crow. And I was like, who is this? Yeah, Are you serious? I swear to God. I'm a political nerd. I mean, Nicole. You know, I swear. I swear. I mean, I knew about this relationship. I didn't know about the failed marriage. Do you know that Joe and Teresa... Do you know about oh, the jail time? Just found out today. Know. She just she found out today. Is she just, who are they? Yeah. Who yeah. are they? What are we talking about? Uh, housewives. <laughs> Nicole, crazy. do you know that Wiz and Amber are getting a divorce? You're freaking me out. I'm sweating through my shirt. <laughs> who, are you, who are you talking about? <laughs> Please welcome our new daytime friend, Nicole Wallace. <laughs> fun I've had yeah, on the you, show. I want to start by giving you some shoe camp. If you oh, just yeah. place your feet Tell me. right there on Where? the, on the oh. shoes. Oh, and you. there you have it. Yeah. Some shoe camp. Yeah. <laughs> so, I hear you've been studying hot topics. Okay, so when you left, first of all, my father called me. What? And said, <laughs> how did you not know about Kim's other marriages? And I said, how do you know about them? <laughs> and then they watch you. And then my sister called and she said, you know, I'm not going out tonight because I don't even want to hear it from my friend. I mean, I really embarrassed my family. <laughs> But, you know, by the same token, there's something really refreshing about somebody who has no idea about the frivolity of Hollywood. <laughs> Honestly. But you know what I love? So I've been watching, and I love, like, the morality that you bring to it. Because when you're outside, it sort of feels like a place where mothers maybe aren't there for their daughters. And, and, and I love watching you because you put it in this framework that I understand. Like, why wouldn't Tori Spelling's mother, who has gazillion, gazillion dollars, pay for private school? And so to me, I'm very disoriented yes. without you sort of serving as a compass. Yeah, well, that, that's, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I'm here for, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a particular hot topic that you're most interested about? I mean, I'm studying up on this Kardashian clan. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and you know what I feel like is real? So I feel like, like, don't laugh at me. I won't. I feel like maybe this marriage, I feel like they're in love. Like, Kanye talks about her the way a man talks about a woman he worships. Worship and, and... You look skeptical. Well, I, I do believe that he worships her, but not necessarily in a normal way. More like in a maniac way. Oh, no. Yes. Do you have a bad feeling about this? Yes. Oh, no. Yes. There's a baby involved now, so I'm totally rooting for them. I also get her. Like, I think she's nice and very public, and yes. she shares. And I could never do that. I mean, she shares everything about her life and her body and her pregnancy, you know. Well, now let's talk about you. Okay. Because, you know, <laughs> you are a very, very busy woman. You have a lot going on. Now, you uh, worked in the Bush White House? Yep. 
Yeah. You were the liaison between the president and the press. Exactly. Now, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, that, would, that title was White House uh, Communications, Communications Director. Yes. Now, how long, how, I mean, you're young, you're a young woman, 42. Yeah, I mean, politics is for the very, very young. I mean, it's like a 24-7 job. Yeah. And George W. Bush did an awesome job at putting women in really powerful positions and then really supporting them. I screwed up all the time, and he always had my back. So he was an awesome boss. Well, let me ask you, um, because I'm curious, it's a very important job. Do they pay a lot? <laughs> they pay plenty, you know? I mean, for a young person, they, yes. they pay plenty. I'd say, like, starting salaries in the White House are between, like, 20 and 30, which in D.C., it's a less expensive city than New York City. Yes, yes. So you start low, and, and you work up to certainly an amount of money that is plenty to live on in Washington, D.C. Got gotcha. you. Thank you for being honest. Sure. Oh, weren't you curious sure. about that? Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? The president doesn't make that much more than the senior staffers. I mean, government in general isn't a well-paying job. Yes. You know? Yeah. Now, um... Before you became a part of The View, yeah. but after the White House, and I've seen you a few times on Morning Joe, yeah. you're a talking head. Yes. But did you have a steady job, you know, with benefits and stuff? No. I mean, much to my, my husband saw me go through the 2008 campaign cycle. We did it together. I worked for Sarah Palin and John McCain. It right. ended disastrously. And afterward, I really wanted to do something different, so I started writing novels. And I, I oh. imagined a fictional female president. Um, in my head, yes. and people ask me all the time if the books are true, and I'm like, no, we haven't had a real female president. <laughs> what, so, what, what was there a time when you um, lost faith in uh, Sarah Palin as a future president? Yeah. Even I mean, though you worked for her? Yes, and there was a moment um, shortly after I met her where I realized that she realized that she was in over her head. And, and, and just watching her sort of shrink under the enormity and the scrutiny and right. the hot, bright light yes. of our national political process. I, I feel like if there's one thing I can say on the view, one thing I can't say enough, it's that we should be happy when anyone wants to go into politics. We are really hard on our politicians. Yeah. And we should be happy when people want to jump in and do that. Yeah. Um, I know you work very closely with her. Yeah. Uh, is she a crier? No. You know, she's I've not seen a... George Bush more cry, cry more, more often than I ever saw. Uh -huh. No, uh -huh. no, she wasn't a crier. Now, when she, when Sarah interviewed with Katie Couric, you remember the famous question, "What newspapers do you read?" And Sarah Palin had nothing to say. Yeah. After that, does she come off stage and throw a shoe at you because you were supposed to tell her that? <laughs> um, that was the second part of the. Uh, of K Katie did the interview in multiple parts. Mm -hmm. So Sarah Palin was already angry at me and was no longer speaking to me because of the first part, which was where they'd done a sit down and um, it had not gone very well from Sarah Palin's perspective. Yeah, but with politicians, they don't give you a list of questions that they're going to ask. Politicians are supposed to be able to think off their feet. So why would she blame you? Because she had to blame somebody. Well, I think she was really disappointed with the way she was being handled by the entire staff. And I think I was um, a, a fair scapegoat. I was part of, I was one of a very small circle of people yeah. helping her. And the decisions in hindsight weren't good ones for her. I mean, yeah. she didn't look good. So hmm. it was fair to be mad at a staff person. That's your job. Yes. You know, as I said before, the politicians are the ones putting themselves and their families through it. Right. And it's a staffer's job to, to, to help you through that. But... There's nothing you can do as a staffer when you sort of lose the confidence of the principal, and that's what happened through the course of the mm -hmm. Kirk interviews. Um, now, you've been married for a few years Nine now? Years. Nine yeah. years. Nine yeah. years. Yeah. With a two-and-a-half-year-old. Yeah. Good yeah. for you. Yeah. Uh, you know, I always say, because, you know, you, you have a very high-powered career, and now, of course, being on The View, and I always feel like women do themselves a disservice if they don't stay open to love and family and the totally. things that, that you spoon at night. Now, what's your son's name? My son's name is Liam. Yeah. And my husband and I may love him too much. Yeah. We have come to the realization that we, uh, last weekend, we, my, he, my son loves construction vehicles, so if we're driving on 684 and we see a tractor, we have to pull over, and sometimes we're in a rush, Aww. and I'm like, no, 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 pull over, pull over. And so, oh, yeah, this is us. We, we have um, vintage tractors, and our son is probably more spoiled than the royal baby. But, yeah. But, you know, we're having a blast. Yeah. I mean, they're so fun. Now, what does your husband do for a living? How did you meet him? So we met on the Florida recount while they were counting ballots. He's, a, he's a political. He, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think for women in politics, it's very hard to not... If it, first of all, there's lots... I mean, there are lots of things about the TV show scandal that aren't true, but one of them is that lots of people fall in love on campaigns and in White House. Gotcha. Because you're together all the time. Uh -huh. um, so, you know, lots of trips, lots of hotels. You know. You know. No, I'm not... No? <laughs>
<laughs> You're the Politico. So, yeah, we met on the Florida recount, and um, it was sort of love at first sight. And I remember calling home, and my mom said, who's going to win, Bush or Gore? I'm like, you know, I'm not sure, but I met the cutest guy. So I win. And my mom was like, that's so inappropriate. <laughs> I want to continue conversation. Okay. So much more to talk with Nicole Wallace about up next. We're going to find out also how much Nicole has learned from, about hot topics. I'm going to challenge her in a fun game. But I also <laughs> want to ask you about Lewinsky and some okay. other stuff. Okay. okay. And Hillary running. Okay. Keep it here with Nicole Wallace. Yeah, no, we were talking about your outfit, black and white in the front row, and I was saying that during the commercial break, she said that she was 70 years old, and I said, this is a Wendy 70. Like, like thank you. I want to be that. Me I want to be that. I, now. So, <laughs> so Nicole Wallace is here from The View, everybody, and we've been, you know, playing around, talking with her. I want to ask, do you feel sorry for Monica Lewinsky? I do, and I'm so pleased to see her standing up for something that she knows a lot about. She, right? I mean, she described herself as the first person to have her life and her reputation ruined by the Internet. And she is that. And she has, you know, the week that President Clinton was, he was impeached, right? Not, yes. not ultimately not by the House and the Senate. But, but he had a 67% approval rating from the American public. We liked him so much that this didn't affect how people felt about him. Her life was ruined. Yeah. Her life was ruined. So I was really happy to see her yesterday. And I think that as women... There has to be a little bit more of a sisterhood. There's a lot of slut shaming in our political yes. culture. Yes, you know, and, yes. um, and I, I, I was happy to see her. Yes. Now, um, do you think that Hillary will run for president? Well, I think it's so interesting that this question comes after Monica because I do think Hillary will run. I'm a huge fan of the idea of a Hillary Clinton candidacy. I'm really interested in seeing how she handles the gender issue because I think she's learned a lot since last Ugh. time. But I think the I mean, politics is the ultimate. See, this is when my Sexism. political mirror comes out. Sexism, but it's the ultimate reality show, right? Anything can happen. And a lot of Democratic women that I know want to rehash some of this Lewinsky stuff. They still have questions about how she could have stood by Bill during that. And so I don't... As a I'm nosy. I don't even yeah. care. Yeah. Well, I don't think they uh, like, care about infidelity, but, but I think it's an interesting confluence, right? So Monica Lewinsky's becoming public again. Hillary Clinton's going to run again after her unsuccessful bid eight years ago. I think Hillary will be an incredibly strong candidate, and I think it'll be really, really... Hopefully, it will inspire my party to put up someone really great. Okay. Right. Right. All right. Back in the gutter. Let's talk hot <laughs> topics. <laughs> okay, Nicole, are you ready for your pop quiz? Yes, yes. All right. All right. Don't, don't I'm help so her. nervous. Okay. <laughs> um, if you get three of the four yeah. questions I right, come back. I've got a prize for okay. you. <laughs> okay. Nicole? Yes. What rapper recently picked a fight with pop star Iggy Azalea? Do you know who that is? No. But I know, but, well, I do know who her she is. Her song is the fancy song? No. Sing it. <laughs> do you have it? Okay. Well, anyway. A rapper picked a fight with Iggy. Yeah. Who's the rapper? Eminem, Snoop Dogg, or Kanye West? Eminem seems like he's in, like, a more peaceful place. I'm okay. going to cross him off. I'm going to go with... Who was it? Snoop? Snoop and, and Kanye. No, Kanye's happily... I'm going to go with Snoop. Yes! <laughs> Good! Okay. Which of the following cities is not home of a Housewives franchise? Oh, God, no, this is not my good one. Okay. <laughs> Which makes it fun for us. Okay. <laughs> okay, Chicago, mm -hmm. Melbourne, or Beverly Hills? Chicago's too cold. They wouldn't like that. Chicago doesn't have Housewives. You're right! <laughs> Did I get enough right to get my prize? No, oh. you need to get you all need right. to get one all right, more. All right, all right, all right. Okay, which celebrity recently changed his uh, back tattoo from his wife? Oh, I know this. Name? Nick Cannon. I interviewed him on the view. Yes. yes! Okay. Well, he's so cute. You, well, you've earned your prize, but wait a minute. I just want to ask you one oh, more for God. prosperity. Can we quit while we're ahead. Mm -mm. <laughs> How many days were Kim Kardashian and Chris Humphreys married? 102, 25, or 72? And I, you, <laughs> you ate the crow. It wasn't 20, because you had to find that crow. Right. 102? No, 72. <laughs> but that's okay. You still got your prize. Yeah! Come on in. <laughs> You've got oh, a lot of catching so up exciting. to do, young lady. Yes. I've given you every magazine Thank for the you. month of November. So Life and Style, The Star. Thank and you. by the way, yes. you tell Rosie O'Donnell that one of the senators in Utah is Michael Lee. <laughs> <laughs> that, remember? 
<laughs> Nicole, thank you so much for thank coming and playing so with us. Uh, the View airs weekdays on ABC. Mm -hmm. Up next, this year's hot, hottest Halloween costumes. Don't go away. <laughs> When stars act up, we break it down at the hot talk table. I don't have kids, but I love telling parents how to raise theirs. <laughs> and sexy chef Fabio Viviani's cooking up a southern soul food classic. Are y'all hungry? <laughs> Friday on an all-new Wendy. Halloween Boogity Boogity Boo is next week. And here to show us some of the season's hottest Halloween costumes is celebrity stylist, friend to the show. Say hello to Janae Luciani. Hi. Nice to see you again. Great to see okay. you. How you doing, Wendy? How you doing? <laughs> what are we wearing? Okay, so I wanted to do a Wendy-inspired costume, just because I love you. Oh. So I am a hot topic. You're welcome. Oh, okay. I see. A do it yourself. I got the hot wig, the hot tights, and then all the things that you talk about on the show are glued to my dress right here. Yes. And various body parts. And I, <laughs> I want to say hello to Taylor Swift and the people at Keds. You know, she's the brand ambassador. And thank you for sending me the collector's um, Halloween. Ooh. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I love kids. There you okay, go. lots of kids <laughs> backstage and adults. Let's yes. get started with costumes. Our first category, kids costumes. Come on out. So all of the costumes that we're featuring today are from Spirit Halloween, uh -huh. the world's largest Halloween retailer. Aww. So Frozen, right? Frozen. Biggest movie of the year. Yes. Let it go. We can't get that out of our heads, right? So all the girls want to be princesses Anna and Elsa. Great sister act type costume, Aww. too. And then the snow friend Olaf is perfect for a boy or a baby. Aww. And we're going to dim the lights for our next trend. we got to bring the lights down, right, so we can see the Marilyn, next trend. hit the light switch. There we go. So this is a super high-tech costume trend combining fashion and technology. I love it. The witch, my little baby Gigi. I don't know if you remember her from last year. Her Hi, Gigi. Her is lighting up, right? Yes. Um, the ninja's chest and sword light up, and the green lantern's chest and bucket light up, which is also a great safety For safety. Thing. safety. Trick or treating, yeah. Oh, you kids. Thank That's you, cute. kids. Thank, thank you, kids. Uh, thank you, kids. They're all a bunch of hams. They're so cute. Our, our next category, is they are adorable. Our next category, couples. Come on out, couples. Whoa. I don't know what is going on, but I like it. Okay. This wins the award for the most daring costume, not the most figure forgiving, the skin suit, but you can make other party goers guess who's Who underneath, is that right? Under the green? Comes in a variety of colors. Smoking and vamping. <laughs> no, this is very cute. Go. Very cute. And what goes better together than bacon and eggs? Bacon and eggs, right. perfectly. Fun and humorous way a couple can show the world they sizzle for under 60 bucks. Yes, nice. <laughs> Thanks, couples. Okay, our next group is Girls Night Out. Come on out, ladies. <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect. So why should the guys get to have all the fun? We did sexy female superheroes. And these are really cute, all With of them. Batman versus Superman coming out, everyone's talking about superheroes again. It's like bigger than ever. Yes, yes. So this is for a fun, sexy night out on the town. We have Batgirl and Robin. If you want to show off your legs, you just need the hot boots, yes, right? Uh -huh. uh, we have a sexy spider girl, which is a jumpsuit. Cute. So really showing off the curves. Uh -huh. And a smoking hot teenage mutant ninja turtle. Nice. Really, really fun option. Nice. For so this girls is girls night out category. Thanks, mm -hmm. ladies. Our next category is what's trending. Come on out. Halloween no. booty pull this year. A, a Kardashian? Booty pull. Iggy Azalea and Kim Kardashian. You got it, Wendy. This is inspired by J-Lo and Iggy's booty video. A really easy do-it-yourself. Just the one-piece leotard, some hot heels, and plenty of junk in the trunk. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> And now I recognize Pharrell Williams. Of course. Everyone was talking about Pharrell for his crazy choice of hats. Love it. Year. How Love cute it. is he? So all you need to do is just add the track jacket and you're good to go, yes. right? Yes. Now, ice bucket challenge? Last but not least, everyone was jumping on the ALS uh, ice bucket challenge for ALS awareness. So this is a do-it-yourself costume inspired by that. You just need the bucket, some ribbon, and fake ice cubes. How do you drink your beer? Not cold and wet. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that, that's a good one also. Ice bucket. Oh, these are all good. You all look great. Thank you. Come on back up, everybody. Janae, nice job again. Thank you. Special thanks 
to everybody over at Spirit Halloween for all these great costumes. For more information on these costumes, go to wendyshow.com. Up next, it's time for Ask Wendy. <laughs> Do you want to be my next co-host? Okay, good. Go to wendyshow.com, request your free tickets, and be a part of my studio audience. Make sure you dress to impress. I can't wait to see you. Ask Wendy time. How you doing? Hi, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Joy. How you doing? Hi, Joy. How can I help? I have a 15-year-old son who has a girlfriend I'm not that crazy about, mm -hmm. and he asked me to buy him condoms. Ooh. And... I don't know what to do. Am I allowing him to have sex by buying them? What should I do? Where's his dad? Home. <laughs> I mean, okay. We're he, together. He asked you to buy the condoms totally. or you and da dad together? I wonder why he'd go to you as opposed to go to his dad. Well, you know, they say talk about sex to your kids. Always wear a hat, be safe, all that jazz. So I've been doing that since fourth grade, since yeah. they told me to. Buy him the condoms. Do I have him do it or me do it? You can do it. Okay. I mean, we know how to buy condoms. <laughs> you, you, you are partially giving him the thumbs up to have sex, but you realize if you don't buy the condoms, he's going to do it anyway. Right. That's what I'm okay. afraid of. I know, I know. Good luck, Joy. Thanks. Okay. Oh, audience eye candy is next. Don't go away. Michelle Dawson. She just yeah. celebrated her birthday last week. And you, my dear. How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? my audience eye candy of the day. You have to look at the over-the-knee boots. You grannies out there, I'm telling you. <laughs> tell us quickly about your look. My necklace is from TJ Maxx. It's Betsy Johnson, about $40. Okay. My whole outfit is from JCPenney, about $60. Uh -huh. And my boots, over-the-knee, hot and sexy, $60. Yes! <laughs> Nicole Wallace from The View for coming by. Also, Janae Luciani, you did a beautiful job with our Halloween models. Models, thank you so much for showing up. And my fabulous, vibrant co-host, my studio audience, thank you for being here from far and wide. Tomorrow, the legendary Susan Lucci stops by. Plus, we're going to give a deserving breast cancer survivor a fabulous head-to-toe makeover. I love you for watching today, and I'll see you next time on Wendy. Bye. <laughs>